Good morning, friends. I am so excited to be here today. As many of you know, Miss Tracy did not have a great Friday or a great Thursday or a great weekend, but I am very glad to be back at school to do circle time with you. So let's get started by singing our good morning song. So if you're ready and you know the words, I wanna hear your best singing voices. Good morning, little sprouts, how are you? Good, good. Good morning, little sprouts, how are you? Good, good. It is time to start our day. We will learn and work and play. Good morning, little sprouts, how are you? Good, good. So I wanna know how you are doing today. So can you tell me how you're feeling today? I wanna to know if you had a good sleep. I wanna know if you ate a lot for breakfast, if you're feeling good today. So let me know how you're feeling today. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Can we say good morning to Mr. Sean? And we'll say good morning to Theo. And say good morning to mummies and daddies and brothers and sisters. And then we'll say good morning to me, Miss Tracy. Good morning. I also want to teach you how to say hello in French. So my friends at preschool got to know this quite well. We say bonjour. Can you say bonjour? Perfect. So I would say bonjour mes amis, which means hello my friends, as my way to say hello to them in French. So I'm doing pretty good today. I feel pretty green. Last week I had a couple of yellow, blue, and even a red day. Is it okay that I had a red day? Yeah, it's totally okay that I had a red day. We all get really big feelings sometimes and they just build up inside of us and they come bubbling out the top and we might yell and we might get upset. And it's okay that we're feeling that way. We have to remember that the people around us they don't know what's going on with us. So we need to tell them what's happening. So when you're feeling red, I hope that you tell mommies and daddies why you're feeling red or why you're angry. Use your words that you have to be able to tell them what's wrong. So now that I'm feeling pretty green, let's get started with our day. So last week we figured out that it was a new month. We figured out that it was April. So it's gonna rain with our fingertips for April. So, it's raining for April. We need to figure out what day of the week it is. Do you think you can help me figure out what day of the week it is? Perfect. All right, let's see those two fingers and those five fingers just like this. How many fingers does that make? Seven, that's right. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Do you think we can do it in French now? Excellent, let's try it. Let's see the seven fingers again. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Dimanche, lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, vendredi, samedi. Hmm. So we've sung our song, we know it's April, but do we know what day of the week it is? So if we were coming to preschool, this would be the very first day of the week we would come to preschool. We would say it's ma, ma, Monday. Today is Monday, today is Monday, today is Monday, and we're going to have some fun. So today is Monday which in French is lundi. Can you say lundi? Great job. So we know it's April, we know it's Monday, but we need to figure out what number it is. Do you think we can go count the numbers to figure out what number it is today? All right, I'm gonna grab my pointer. I want you to grab your pointer and I want you to grab your circle time picture and I want you to help me count together. Are we ready? So we have to find all the way down here to number one. We have to find number one, and we're gonna count together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good job. Today is number six. 
So if we were writing out our date, what day of the week is it again? Monday. So we would write Monday. And then what month is it? April. And what was that number we counted to today? Number six. So we could say Monday, April 6th. Great job, friends, for helping me figure out the date. And now we have to figure out the weather. Can you sing our song with me? What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather, everyone? Is it snowy? Is it cloudy? Is there rain or is there sun? All right. So. I want you to use your looking eyes to look outside your window and I want you to tell me what the weather is like where you are today. Oh, that's really interesting. I need to find all my weather. Some of my weather is still missing. Okay, I think I've got most of it. All right, so where I am today, it is not very nice. So I'm gonna put up the clouds because I don't see the sun. And I'm going to put up the snow because when I came to school this morning, it was not very nice. So I'm going to have the panda wear his snow boots. And I'm going to have the panda wear his pants. Because if you're going outside today, you'll probably need pants in order to make sure that you're feeling toasty warm. And we're going to put his coat on. I'm going to put his mitts on keep his hands warm and then I'm gonna put his toque on as well to keep his head warm all right I think our panda is ready for today so I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna to do today we're gonna to read a story I'm gonna talk about this soup can right here we're gonna talk about the activities that are on your list to do today so we have making a Mr. Munchie and building a garden. And then we're going to do the magic box. And that's all we're going to have time for today. Are you ready to hear my story today? Perfect. All right. So I want you to find a cozy spot to sit. I want you to turn on your listening ears. And I want you to use your quiet mouth. I'm a good listener. Read me a book. My hands are in my lap and at Miss Tracy I look. When she sees I'm ready, she will say, here is the story I have for you today. So my story is about this guy. Who is this? It's a bear. So my story is called Bear Counts. Mouse and Bear share breakfast, basking in the morning sun. Bear looks up, and the bear counts. One, one sun floating high, one giant dragonfly, one robin on her nest, only one Barry left. Numbers, numbers everywhere. Can you count along with Bear? How many suns? One. How many dragonflies? One. How many robin? One. And how many berries? One. Mouse and Bear see hair. And Hair calls out, Howdy do! He is holding yummy fruit. And the bear counts. Two! Two paws which hold a treat. Two apples crisp and sweet. Two stumps for perfect chairs. Two friends who love to share. Numbers, numbers everywhere. Can you count along with Bear? One, two. 
bear hears funny sounds coming from an aspen tree. It is raven, owl, and wren, and the bear counts. Three! Can you show me three fingers? Good job. Three chums who chitter chat. Three funny muskrats. Three clouds above the trees. Three bumbling bumblebees. Numbers, numbers everywhere. Can you count along with bear? One, two, three. Great job counting. Bear cries, look, it's Badger, Mole, and Gopher by the shore. Badger has his fishing pole, and the bear counts. What are we up to now? Four. Four fish splish and splash. Four geese waddle past. Four turtles on a log. Four croaking hopping frogs. Numbers, numbers everywhere. Can you count along with bear? Ready? One, two, three, four. Mouse squeaks, let's go swimming. And in the pond they dive. The friends float in the pond and the bear counts. Five. Five ducks in the water, five lively river otters, five lovely lily pads, five pinching crawdads. Numbers, numbers everywhere. Now you can count just like bear. One, two, three, four, five. Great job counting, guys. Oh, that was a fun book to read. All right. Something new I want to do today is our alphabet soup cans. So I got these just before all of this craziness started, and I didn't really get a chance to use them in class yet. So I'm going to start using them every day. We're going to learn about a different letter. So this one is which letter? A, good job. It's the very first letter in our alphabet. So I'm gonna open up this soup can and I'm gonna take out these objects one at a time and we're gonna talk about them. So who knows what this is called? What guy is this? This is an alligator. I know some of my friends would know what this is. So this one is an alligator. So I'm gonna put our alligator right over here. Hmm, this one's super easy. I bet everybody gets this one. What's this? It's an apple. Great job, friends. All right. Oh, let's see if you figure out what this one is. What's this one? It's an ant. Good job. All right. Who is this guy? Hmm. This one's tricky because I bet we're saying a lot of words that don't start with the sound ah, ah, right? Or a, a. So this guy is an ape. Can you say ape? Good job. I bet some of my friends said gorilla, and you're not wrong. It's just not the word that starts with A. All right. Oh. What's this? This falls off of trees, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And squirrels like to pick them up. It's called an acorn. Can you say acorn? Great job. And then I have two pictures. So I have uppercase and I have lowercase a. So we practice writing uppercase and lowercase letters at preschool. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So to draw our a, our letter a in uppercase, we go up the mountain, 
down the mountain and across the bridge. And I know I sing a song. Where do you start your letters at the top? So I like all my friends to start their letters at the top. But A is much easier if we talk about it going up the mountain and down the mountain and crossing the bridge. And if you want to go from the top and go down the both sides of the mountain and then cross the bridge, that's okay too. And if you want to draw your lowercase a, all you're going to do is draw a circle and give your circle a little leg on the side. So we're going to draw a circle and then give our circle a little leg on the side. Great job. All right. I'm going to talk to you about our activities today. So one of the activities is to make a garden with your Play-Doh. So when you take your Play-Doh out, I want you to squish it all up. We're going to squish it, squish it, squish it. And then there should be some pipe cleaners and there should be some straws in there. So you can use the Play-Doh to make the grass or the dirt. And then you can use the straws and the pipe cleaners to make your flowers. You can even put beads on the pipe cleaners. You could put the paper straws on the pipe cleaners too to give them some decoration. And then you can fold them into the shape of a flower if you want. Um, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it any way you want, but I do wanna see some pictures. So if mommies and daddies wanna take pictures, I want you to post them in our Facebook group. All right, so let me talk to you about making your very own Mr. Munchie. So we like to do our cutting practice or a ripping and tearing practice because it's really good for our fine motor skills and our hand-eye coordination. Teaching our fingers to do what we want them to do and how we want them to do it. At preschool, we have a trash can that we have, we've got two trash cans actually. One has long hair and one has short hair and they're named Mr. and Mrs. Munchie. And the story I love to tell the kids, and it's a true story, is that Mr. and Mrs. Munchie only eat paper. That's the only thing they eat, which is really strange, but they love colored paper and they love scrap paper. But I forget to feed them all the time because I go home on weekends and I'm not here at preschool on Saturdays and Sundays. And so usually on Monday, they're really hungry, but they don't have any teeth like you or me. So we have to make sure that we rip or we cut our paper into really, really tiny pieces so that they don't have to worry about chewing the paper, they can just swallow it whole. So that's what I like to tell my friends. And now you're gonna make your very own Mr. Munchie. So I had asked mummies and daddies to try and find an empty Kleenex box or tissue box or even a little shoe box, really any box is fine. I like the Kleenex box because it already has this hole open but it doesn't have to be a Kleenex box. So mummies or daddies are gonna help you with this step. They're gonna help you with the scissors and they're gonna help you cut the little plastic piece out of the middle of the Kleenex box, just so that it's much easier to get the paper inside because what part of Mr. or Mrs. Munchie is this hole going to be? Who knows? Good job, it's going to be their mouth. So this is exactly where the paper is gonna go. All right, so I've cut out my plastic, so I don't need that anymore. And now I just have this empty hole. Now you can do whatever you want. You could put stickers all over Mr. Munchie. You could cover them in paper. You could color on them or decorate them. I am going to use some glue and some leftover hearts that I had from another craft we did at preschool and I'm gonna glue some hearts on. So. Oh, actually, before I glue my hearts on, I'm gonna draw my mouth. So, I'm gonna draw some lips because my Mr. Munchie is gonna be Mrs. Munchie. So, I've got some black lips I'm gonna draw on to my box, just like this. And then my bottom lip. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
because this is your very own Mr. or Mrs. Munchie and it can look exactly how you want it to look. It doesn't have to look any specific way. Okay, so I've drawn my mouth on. Hmm, but I'm missing something. I'm missing a nose. So I'm gonna give Mrs. Munchie the tiniest little nose right there. Just the littlest nose. All right, so now that I've done that part, I'm gonna start gluing on some of these hearts. So remember, when we're gluing things on, do we glue all over the paper and then stick on? Or do we put the glue right onto the object we wanna glue down? Yeah, we put glue right onto the object we wanna glue down. Which can be tricky sometimes, but we wanna make sure we get lots of glue on there. All right, so I'm gonna put only a few on just to show you what I'm doing today. So I'm taking my heart with my glue and I'm gluing it on top of my box. Just like that. I'm gonna do one more. So once you have decorated your Mr. Munchie, you're gonna put your glue away or your paint or your markers or whatever. And then you're gonna find inside the craft bag I gave you some eyeball stickers. And I'm gonna take my eyeball stickers and I'm gonna put them on my Mrs. Munchie, just like that. And so now, when I'm practicing my cutting or my ripping, I'm just gonna use some of these to, as an example to show you. So you're gonna take your paper and you're gonna hold it with your pincher fingers on one side and your pincher fingers on the other, and then you're going to rip. And I could rip this into even smaller pieces so that Mr. or Mrs. Munchie don't have as much work to do to get it to break up inside. And if you're using your scissors, you're gonna use your helper hand to hold, you're gonna put Tommy Thumb in the top hole and the finger family in the bottom hole. And then you're gonna cut the tiniest little chunks of paper. Oh goodness, Mrs. Munchie is gonna love this. So delicious purple paper. There we go. So that's our Mrs. or Mr. Mr. Munchie craft that you can do today. So the last thing I have to do with you today is the magic box. So let's get started with that. <clears throat> All right. So I used something from the classroom. So we'll see if you can guess what's inside my magic box. All right, so Dason wants to know what sound does it make? Hmm. Hmm. It doesn't really make a sound. It's quiet. Kevin wants to know how would you use it if it were alive? If it were alive, it would be quite, I don't know how I'd use it if it was alive. It wouldn't be alive. That's the answer there, is that it wouldn't be alive. And Maya wants to know if it's purple. It's not purple, it's green and orange. So I want you to think, using your thinking brains, about things that are in Miss Tracy's classroom that are green and orange. Okay, so it doesn't make a sound, it wouldn't be alive, and it's green and orange. And where would it live? In Miss Tracy's classroom, it lives inside of a purple basket. So I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think about my classroom, and I want you to think about the purple basket, and all the things that are inside the purple basket. One of those things is green and orange. Have you pictured it in your brain yet? Right. Something else that it does is it lights up. So it doesn't make a sound, but it does light up. It, it, it wouldn't be alive, but if I were to use it, I would use it to help calm my body. So I might touch it and feel it and roll it around. It's not purple. It's green and orange, and it would live inside the purple basket in Miss Tracy's classroom. 
Hmm, tricky, tricky. I'll give you another clue. It's kind of spiky. Hmm, are we thinking? So it doesn't make a sound, but it does light up. It wouldn't be alive, but I would probably touch and feel it and maybe roll it around. It's not purple, but the basket it lives in is purple. It is green and orange. And it's kind of spiky. Have you figured out what's inside my magic box yet? Oh, those are some really good guesses. All right, I'm gonna show you what's inside my magic box. It's my spiky but soft sensory ball. And it lights up. That's right, it doesn't really make a noise, but it does light up. And it's kind of calming to look at, so I might roll it back and forth when I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed and I need a minute to just bring my body back down to calm. All right, you guys had some really good guesses there. So let's get out our working hands so we can sing our goodbye song. Are you ready? All day long we worked and played, worked and played, worked and played. All day long we worked and played, and now our day is done. Wave goodbye to all your friends, all your friends, all your friends. Wave goodbye to all your friends until we meet again. Bye. See you tomorrow.